Welcome back, you're here with Nate to Wait, and this is Crossbeats Production. So in this video, I want to show you guys using a dynamic EQ and how to use it to carve out some of your bass to help your drum kit sit in the right place in the mix. So I mean, dynamic EQ can be used for anything. It could be used for vocals, uh, whatever you really want to put it on, to be honest. But um, in this particular tutorial, I want to show you guys me using it on a bass. And um, the reason why I'm using a dynamic EQ is because EQing the actual instrument just wasn't enough to, to make it sound right. And the other thing is that the, the bass player who played this bass, um, the timing wasn't exactly perfect on some of the notes, not all of them, but on some of them. So it needed to have some kind of a rhythm to help it kind of sit back in place with the, the rest of the instruments. So what I did was I pretty much carved out some of the really low end stuff and removed it out with a an Baxendale uh, type filter there. And I used pretty much minus 10 dB on that. And then I also removed out some of the, the um, presence of the, the low end as well at 107 and some at uh, 502. These were kind of the, the areas that I found on the bass that were kind of peaking and resonating within the instrument itself. So what I'll do is I'll play the kick, uh, sorry, the drum kit and the bass together so you guys can hear it. And um, just listen to how, when the EQ is off, how the bass kind of overwhelms a part of the, the kick drum. So you can kind of hear it anyway, but uh, maybe just listen to it with headphones on so you can hear it for sure. But it definitely just helps clear out the mix so certain things sit in right and the drum kit and the bass kind of sit right because obviously the kick and the bass are the two main things you want to get right. So let me play this to you right now and I'll show you what it sounds like and uh, we'll come back and do a further review. All right, so I kind of went in and out by passing it and then putting it back on. And if you can notice, the, the cloudiness of the bass kind of disappears and the drums can stick out a bit more and they kind of just have their own space then. So, I mean, it's not too much of an in, de in detail kind of process to do it. It's actually quite simple. What I did was I used a preset to start it off and then I kind of tweaked the preset to, to get it how I wanted it to sound. Um, the preset was the low end control. Basically, it set up that filter there at the bottom is actually at I think it was at 500 and something when it first came on. Um, but then when it changed, I obviously changed it down to 300, which kind of gave me that right amount of reduction of the low end. Um, and it didn't take away too much of the, the the thickness of the bass. It just got rid of that really low end stuff that you don't need on the bass. Because, well, I mean, it depends on how you're going to sit the mix. But if you're doing it the way I did it, I wanted the kick to sit in the low end register of this mix and the bass to be above it. Um, so I had to either d make a decision to remove it or leave it there and, and fiddle around with it. So this is what I did. Obviously increased some of the, the top end stuff as well. So I gave it a little bit more presence within the 1 to 2K area and removed out 500, which is usually on most times the bass uh, needs to have that 500 removed out just to get rid of that, that wobbly sound that you'd kind of hear. So anyway, I want to show you guys this little tip trick type thing and explain it to you. There's other processing prior to this which I use but I'll just skip that for now because this is more or less just about the bass and the, the drum kit and using dynamic EQ on that. So hope you guys got something out of this. If you did remember to like, subscribe and uh, make your comments, comments down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.